Hi, Kevin here. Nice to see you again. Well, today we're going to fix a double crust chicken pot pie. And I did make the same pot pie yesterday and I thought it was really delicious. So the first thing we need is the crust. Now, the crust I'm making is one that was developed by Christy Morrison at America's Test Kitchen. It does not contain any water and it is a tender, not a flaky crust. I think it's wonderful. What you do is take a half cup of sour cream and to the sour cream add one large beaten egg. And then just mix the sour cream and the egg together. Okay. And then what I have here in the food processor is two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. And to the flour, I'm going to add one and a half teaspoons of salt. And give this a quick spin. That's just to combine the flour and the salt. Then add 12 tablespoons or one and a half sticks of unsalted butter, cold and diced. Yeah, this is very different from my usual French pastry dough, which would work equally well for this recipe. And then we're going to pulse the machine about five times just to break up the butter. Cover your ears. There. Then add half of the sour cream and egg mixture. Pulse the machine again about five times. Then add the remaining sour cream. Then I'm going to run the machine just until the dough begins to mass on the blade. That's it. And then pour the dough. You'll see it's very crumbly, but it is not over mixed. And then form it into a ball, just a rough ball. I hope you can see all right and then flatten the ball into a disc. Grab my bench scraper here, Just loosen it. And you notice I did not flour my work surface here, no need to. Then cover the dough with plastic wrap. Wrap it up. I have to redo that. I messed up my plastic wrap. Take two. There we go. And then pop this in the refrigerator for at least one hour so that the dough can become fully hydrated. And if you'd like to make the dough in advance, you can make it and then freeze it for up to two months. All right, my dough is nicely chilled and I did let it sit out for about 15 minutes. 
just to let it soften up a little bit. And now, since this is a double crust pie, I'm going to cut the dough in half. We can move one half over here. I'll just put it on a sheet of plastic wrap. And then, I'm going to roll this into a ball. Yeah, I will be baking this in a nine inch pie pan. So, I need a round shape. And I'm going to roll out the dough on this really nifty pastry cloth. There's no need to roll the dough between sheets of plastic wrap when you have a pastry cloth. All right, here we go. And I'm going to roll one of the crusts on camera, and I'll do the other one off camera. And since this is going to take a minute, of course, I have a story to share with you. And before I start my story, let me explain that I'm going to roll this uh, to a 12-inch diameter circle. And here's the story. When I was a little boy in the 1960s and early 1970s, there were lots of commercials on TV for frozen food, particularly frozen prepared dinners. You know, like TV dinners, frozen pot pies, and I was deeply influenced by those commercials. However, my mother refused to buy any frozen prepared food. So no TV dinners, no frozen store-bought pot pies. So one day I begged her, please can I have a Swanson's pot pie? And she said no because they're really small, there's almost no food in it, and they are loaded with salt. And she was right about the salt aspect. So for Christmas one year, I got a nice big treat. She gave me not one, not two, but three frozen Swanson pot pies. They were just little things. And of course, we had to cook them in the regular oven. And they took a long time to bake. Of course, everything back then. There were no microwaves, so you had to bake everything in a regular oven. And that was such a treat. And I really loved those little pot pies. I think they were like 25 cents each. So that was way back when. Anyway, wasn't I an easy kid? Imagine if the biggest treat your kid wanted for Christmas was a frozen TV dinner or a frozen Swanson pot pie. Well, I'm just weird that way. I like to try things. Okay, this crust is rolling out very easily. And just a reminder, when you roll pastry dough, always start at the center and then roll to, oh, about an inch or so from the edge. This way, the dough will roll out evenly. In the comments below, you can let me know if you grew up with frozen prepared food. In hindsight, I'm actually grateful that I was not fed all of those TV dinners because, well, they were pretty junky. Not as junky as they are today, I might add. It's probably a lot more sugar and a lot more pre preservatives in frozen food now than there was in the 1960s and early 1970s. I think all those preservatives happened uh, in the 1980s 
and beyond. Okay, we're almost there. Yeah, you just have to be patient when you're rolling out pastry dough. Okay, and now if you have any little uh, edge that is cracked, just take the palm of your hand and push the dough back together. Don't try to bring the dough over. In other words, don't try to stretch the dough to repair the crack. We're just going to go out like this. Go a little this way. And there, we have our pastry dough. Now I'm going to fold this into a triangle. Sorry that dough rolling segment was so long. But if you've never rolled pastry dough before, maybe it was helpful to you. Okay, and then just gently ease it into the pie plate. Don't stretch the dough. And there we have it. Okay, and I'm going to pop this into the refrigerator, and then I'm going to roll out the remaining dough, which is going to be the top crust. And when this is done, I'll come back. All right, so the top crust is rolled out, again, to a 12-inch diameter circle. So I'm going to, once again, form a triangle, and then I'm going to unroll the dough onto a parchment lined baking sheet. Okay, and then this goes into the refrigerator uh, just long enough for us to make the filling. So we'll come right back. Alright, the filling starts with a basic white sauce. So what I have here is one-third cup of butter that I melted over medium heat. And to the butter, I'm going to add one-third cup of all-purpose flour. And then you just stir these together. The idea here is that you want to cook the flour to get rid of the raw flour taste. And a white sauce is super simple to make. You just stir this, oh, for 30 seconds to one minute. Then add two and a half cups of liquid. And you could use part chicken stock and part milk or all chicken stock or all milk. I'm using all milk today. And I did heat this milk in the microwave for about three minutes because if the milk is hot, it will not create lumps in the white sauce. You'll have a very smooth white sauce. And then just whisk this until the sauce thickens, which it will do very quickly. Okay, and we will be adding some vegetables and of course the chicken. And I am going to cheat big time today. My chicken came from a store-bought rotisserie chicken. I just pulled off the breast meat and cut it up. And I'm going to use frozen store-bought vegetables. Yeah, look at this. Oh, it's nice, nice and thick. Okay, I'm going to lower the heat. Then I want to season this up. So I'm going to add a half teaspoon of salt. Some grinds of black pepper. And some garlic powder. About one teaspoon of the garlic powder. And because it's so delicious, 
with the combination of cream. Here I'm going to turn the heat off. It's so delicious with the cream and chicken combination. I'm going to add some tarragon, about oh a teaspoon or so. I love the scent of tarragon. Turn that off, yes. Stir that in. Now, since we can't put a hot filling into a pie crust because it would melt the crust, it is actually a blessing to use the frozen vegetables because it's going to cool everything off. So what I have here is a 10 ounce bag of frozen peas and carrots. You do not have to cook these first. So I should use my spatula here. And then I'm going to add oh from one half to one full cup of frozen diced onion. I'm actually growing onions in my garden right now. And when they, after I harvest them and cure them, I am going to dice and freeze them. It's really helpful to have frozen, already diced onions in the, in the freezer. Okay, and last but by no means least, the star of the show is the chicken, which again is the breast meat from a rotisserie chicken. I have roughly two cups here. And this I'm just going to fold in. I hope my sauce wasn't too thick, but then I really don't like a runny sauce. I know some people do, but not me. Okay, we're good here. Let me fetch the crust and we'll carry on. All right, here's the bottom crust all ready to be filled. Look at this. It's really gorgeous, very colorful. And of course, it smells terrific. And by the way, the, I forgot to tell you that the crust smells terrific too because of the tangy sour cream. Okay, then on with the top crust. This is very cold because I had it in the refrigerator. I'm going to fold this overhang under. Of course, if you have your own method for doing a double crust pie, just use your own technique. Then I'm going to flute the edge. So I take my thumb and index finger in my left hand and I use my, the index finger in my right hand to push the dough this way. Okay. Well, this looks very pretty. Then I'm going to cut some uh, vents, steam vents, in the top crust. Because where else would they be? And then going to give this an egg wash. And this is just one egg that I beat with a fork. There's no water in here. I'm going to use my loathsome silicone brush here, but I wanted to thank whoever it was who told me the last time I put an egg wash on pastry and complained about the silicone brush and also the bristle, the bristle brush um, uh, 
he or she told me that I should go to an art supply store and just buy a really good quality paintbrush because the bristles don't come out. And boy, was that a revelation to me. Sounds like an excellent, excellent idea. And I plan to do just that. Okay, so I'm just painting the fluted edge here. You could also paint the outside edge if you like, but I'm not going to. And then this goes on the bottom rack. Well, first I'm going to put it on a baking sheet, just in case there's any spillover, but I don't think there will be. And then this goes into the preheated 450 degree oven on the bottom rack for 18 to 20 minutes. The crust will start to brown, and then lower the temperature to 375 degrees and continue baking the pie for another 12 to 15 minutes. In other words, you want the crust to turn a, a rich golden brown. And we will come back when this one is ready. And here's the double crust chicken pot pie fresh out of the oven. The crust turned a beautiful golden brown. And boy, does the pie ever smell terrific. I'm going to let it cool on a wire rack for, oh, 30 to 45 minutes. And then I'm going to have a taste of it. All right, the moment of reckoning. Isn't this pretty? Here we go. This is absolutely delicious. And I wanted to show you that even the bottom crust, I'm gonna to try to turn this over without having a disaster. Yeah, even the bottom crust baked beautifully. It's not the least bit soggy. Would you believe I'm on my second slice? It really is terrific from the crust to the filling. It's really comforting to eat. Uh, so I hope you'll give this double crust chicken pot pie a try someday. And just be sure to let it rest for a good 45 minutes after it comes out of the oven. That way the sauce has time to really thicken up. And yeah, give it a try and please post a comment below and I will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.